Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Kelly, your host, and if you are new to this work, please start with episode one. Intermediate students should start with episode 98. Advanced students can start with episode 200. And with me this week for the second, third time, second time, second time, third time, third time is Kathy Shire. <laughs> I'm your, your host, the Spirit Doctor Kelly Sparta. I will have a new co-host starting with me in a couple of weeks, but Kathy is, is keeping me company until that happens, and uh, for that I am incredibly grateful. So we are, um, we're, we're tooting along here. Um, this has been kind of a, a fun thing. So, um, well, the, we've, we've, had, we've had some interesting things happening. <laughs> so... Um, uh, and I'm just going to go bring this up because I forgot to bring it up before, but, uh, as I'm bringing it up on my computer, but there, uh, uh, last week I got two reviews at the same time. Um, and one was a one star review that called me a narcissist, which was fun. <laughs> and then the other one. Uh, was a five-star review. And so I'm actually going to read them both because, you know, why not? Uh, and this, uh, yeah, okay, this is going to take longer to pull up than I want. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull it up on the email because I know where it is there. Um, so the, uh, this is one of those things where I really can use your help, guys, because when I get things like a one-star review, which Literally, this is the only one we've ever had. But, uh, you know, when you get a one-star review, it, it becomes more important than ever to have other reviews that offset that review, right? So that we can get our our uh, our review rating, our star rating back up again. So, you know, we we so appreciate the reviews that you guys offer. And... It is so important to me to have them. And so, you know, I so appreciate anybody who does a review for us. So the first one is I'm going to the first one I'm going to read you is the one star review. And then I'm going to read you the five star review so that you guys can see how both of them go. And um, so the one time the one star review that came in is from. Uh, Zinomon, so lots of Z's and I-N-O-M-O-N on Apple Podcasts. And it says, I've put some time into this show because I really wanted to like it and learn about energy from another perspective. There is just something very off about this woman, her energy, the things she says, the way she talks about people. I can't put my finger on it, but almost this air of superiority or narcissism, maybe. Obviously, no one is for everyone, and I was tempted to just move on without leaving a review, but as I was shutting the show off, in came Kelly's mocking little voice that she does. I can just smell her arrogance from here, and that is the opposite of what the world currently needs. Pretty sure her students are mostly kids, and if that is how she behaves while teaching them how to be more powerful humans, we are doomed. So, obviously, this is not my happy place for a review, but this person's entitled to their opinion, and I can... I, it feels like I triggered them. So, you know, I hope that, that they find something that is better for them. Um, but we also got a really lovely review on the exact same day that says, I have never missed an episode. Five stars from this one's from Gemstone Nerds on Apple Podcasts. And thank you for your review. Uh, it's, and it says, this has been a consistently informative and rich podcast since its start in 2017. I've sincerely enjoyed this part podcast since 2017. Go back and listen to every single episode. It is that good. Gemstone Nerds, I appreciate you so much. And I, I love that you've been listening to the show for a year longer than it's been in, in existence. <laughs> We actually started in 2018, but I love you for wanting it to have been that long. And I appreciate you so much for that. Um, this is one of those things that, that, you know, we love getting great reviews and we love hearing uh, what people like. And, you know, I, I even like to know what you don't like, right? If you don't like something, please email me and say, this sucks. I hated it. And, and I'm happy to adjust things as you guys see fit if that's what you want, because I'm here in service to you. That's why I'm here. So if you guys feel called to help me overcome the one-star review uh, for the podcast and help more people learn about it, 
we would love to have some more podcast uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts, and I would appreciate that so much. So with that said, um, I, I don't really have a lot new to talk about this week. Oh, no, I do. I, I'm not doing karaoke anymore. So, yeah, uh, the, the place that I used to do karaoke is going to be shutting it down, and they're shifting from a bar to an upscale restaurant, and so... There will be no more karaoke. And so I'm kind of sad, but I'm also kind of happy because now I have time to do my rehearsals for Mamma Mia. So it all works out in the end, right? Catherine Loringer, uh, Loringer, I always say that wrong, um, came on the podcast and she talked about spiritual evictions. Well, this one is definitely a spiritual eviction because I would not have quit running karaoke and I would have killed myself trying to do both. And now I don't have to. So um, um, this is one of those things where you go, oh, oh, and then you go, oh, yeah, okay, that's okay then. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes this is how it works out, right? So... But let, let's get into the, the topic for the day because uh, the, Kathy and I have a lot to say on this subject. We're, we're talking about spiritual abuse and religious trauma today, right? And Kathy, I know you come out of mass religious trauma and, uh, you know, I've been through a lot of religious trauma courtesy of the, the Christian church. Um, so, you know, various and sundry denominations of Christian church on my part, you, you came out of fundamentalism, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah, I, so. I am a fully recovered fundamentalist. <laughs> I'm no longer in recovery. I'm fully recovered. There you go. So, so when we talk about religious trauma, let's let's start with religion, and then we'll go into spirituality because there is abuse in the spiritual world as well, and is not just in the the religious world. So, um, let's talk about religion first because I think most people see the elements of that. Um, from their own personal experiences if they've had them in, in different religious traditions. Although I can't speak personally of, from anything other than Christianity because that's where I came from um, and that's where you come from too. So, you know, if other people want to share their stories about, you know, things from other religions and their experience there, the podcast Facebook group, the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta Facebook group, is uh, the place where you can go in and do that. We would love to hear your stories and, you know, just have some conversation with people about the trauma that they've experienced. So, uh, but religious trauma, you want to go first, Kathy, and talk about yours? Well, the, um, the, I think that any spiritual tradition that basically sets out to make you wrong, um, you know, inadequate, um, uh, sinful, whatever language you want to use for it, just because you exist is going to be traumatic. Yeah. And depending on what age that starts to get, you know, pounded into you, um, it becomes, you know, there's, there's a point at a very young age where it's very hard to resist that, you know. If you approach that at an when, at an older place, you can come at it from maybe a more reasoned approach, but not as a little kid. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, many religions, and inclusive of Christianity, um, are not only uh, basically saying you have no right to exist, per se, you're sinful, you're awful, you will never be reconciled, um, but they heap additional uh, crap onto women. Yes. Because of Eve in particular, in that one. You know, it's all your fault, you, you awful women. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, there's a double whammy if you happen to be female in some of these belief systems, not just Christianity. There are others that um, take exception to uh, any sort of power or, um, you know, any sort of um, strength in women um, in a spiritual or, you know, religious kind of way. So there is, when that stuff starts pounding into you over and over and over and over, um, you get to the point where you do think, you know, you're dirt. You do yeah. think that you're worthless. Um, and I remember from a fundamentalist standpoint, um, the, the language was literally, in order to be saved, you had to die. You have to die to yourself. You have to literally die. And Christ comes in and sits on the throne of your heart. Which, at an older point in my life, I said, oh my God, I'm a zombie for Christ. 
<laughs> At which point my roommate said, you know, you, you caused me to um, question my belief in God. I said, why? And they said, because if God was real, I think you would have been struck dead by now. <laughs> You are but, quite blasphemous. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. But think about it, okay? If you really think about it, isn't that, you know, the whole zombie kind of thing, right? That you're you're dead and somebody else is driving? It I is, mean, but but from another perspective in spirituality, we could say that the, the ego dies and, and gives way to Christ consciousness. But that uh, that is a possession thing, too. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, you know? Yep, it's possession. Yeah. So, but... The only way to reconcile was if the sinful nature self dies, right? And um, and the uh, after spending a lot of time thinking, you know, sort of in a Monty Python esque kind of way, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Um, the uh, I finally got to a place where I went. I think this is kind of like you know used car salesmanship, right? You come in with a vintage car that's worth a lot of money. And, and somebody says to you, oh, that old junker, let me take it off your hands for 50 bucks. Right. right. It's kind of like, oh, that soul of yours, that's, that's, that's nasty. Forget that. You know, that, that's, I'll take that off your hands and I'll take the power. And I went, and I got to a point where I said, no, damn it, that's mine. Right. You know, that power is mine. Um, you know, the, the spark of the divine that lives within me um, is mine. I'm not giving it over to anybody else. Right. And so the the trauma piece of it for me was in having had my power really devastated and then in stepping into a reclaiming process. Like a lot of people reclaim having been downtrodden, not just even from religious standpoints, and then reclaiming as those aspects of their power that have effectively been beaten out of them as a means of recovering from that trauma. Right. Yes. And, you know, for me, it was just this inherent sense that no matter what I did, it was probably going to be wrong, right? Anything that was good in life was not okay, right? So, you know, whether I liked sex or whether I liked food or whether I liked money or whether I liked, you know, whatever it was, it was probably going to be a sin, right? And then on top of that, you know, I remember going... So I was in a Catholic elementary school and I was like four years old because I started kindergarten when I was four. And my friend said, let's go to confession together. Now, four years old, kindergarten. What the hell does a kindergartner have to confess to? Let's start with that. Two, we were not confessing to the fathers. We were confessing to the nuns. And so it wasn't a real confession from the church's perspective anyway. It was just an indoctrination technique. And so I go back hand in hand with my friend to go and do this with her. I had no idea what it was because my parents were not Catholic, right? And my parents had been very clear that they had not raised me Catholic and that I didn't know anything about this religion and I would have to have it explained to me. And so I'm walking hand in hand with my friend and, and they get, we get behind the curtain and the nuns separate us. And I'm like, but no, but I just came to be with my friend. <laughs> and, they, and the nun's like, well, you can't be with your friends. Confession is, is private, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay. So I was just going to go sit back down. She's like, no, 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 you're back here. You got to confess. Now, my parents were in the middle of divorce. I was trying to be the perfect child. And the nun said, you have to tell me everything you ever did wrong. I had a complete fucking meltdown. I was like, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm, 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 no, I do everything right. I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl. Mommy! <laughs> screaming, <laughs> screaming into the chapel. Everyone can hear me. And I'm just having this meltdown because they're telling me I did something wrong. And all I did was walk up to hang out with my friend. And I have no idea why I'm suddenly being persecuted. You want to talk about persecution. That's a persecution mm -hmm. right there. And my mother, they called my mother in. I was a horrible child. Blah, 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 blah. Thankfully, my mother stood up for me and said, she's four. Did anybody explain it to her? Did anybody explain the concept? Does anybody, you know, did, did she understand what was going on? And was she given the option to play or not? 
right? And the nuns were like, well, she, she, she screamed. And my mother's like, yes, because you traumatized her. How about we talk about that? How about we talk about how you're traumatizing my child? And so, you know, thankfully that one didn't stick with that. But that was my first experience of any church ever. And so I was like, hmm, not so much for this, right? And then, you know, I would go around the country and visit with friends and, and all my friends would ask, say, hey, come to church group with me. And I'm like, okay. Inevitably, I would ask the question that would get me in trouble and get me thrown out of church group. Yep. And it got to the point where I was being rejected by the church so often that I just got to the point where I knew I was going to get to the edge and I would just ask the same question over and over again so that I could leave on my own terms, which was this question. A woman is desperate to feed her children. She has no way to feed them except to sell her body. And so every night she goes out and sells her body and every morning she is fully repentant but needs to feed her children. Does she go to, to hell? And I, my favorite answer was the one I got from the, the two like 17, 18 year old kids who were leading the children's, uh, you know, worship group. And the woman said no. And the man said yes at the same time. And I was like, I win. <laughs> like, I was like, like, you guys don't even know your answers. You don't know your own answers. There's no questioning within the Christian faith. And this is one of my challenges with it is that if you question, then you're questioning God. Um, it's one of the things that I really appreciate about the Jewish traditions is that you're expected to, tr to question in the Jewish tradition. But in the, in the Christian tradition, you are to take everything as told and it was, you know, there's nothing that to be questioned and everything is what it is. And then the cherry picking that happens out of the Bible, I just, we won't even get there. But yeah, they but use the Bible to, to abuse people by cherry picking the, the verses that... Right. that they like the most and ignoring the ones that are inconvenient or the ones that contextualize the ones that they're using to abuse people. So yeah, I, yeah lots of problems, lots it's of religious the, trauma. It's the, um, the trauma that's perpetrated by making another less than. Yes. And, and by, from a very early age, um, pounding that into them is that you are less than, you have no rights, you cannot question, do not think, um, you are inherently bad, um, and any belief system, you know, there are cults that do that, there are, yes. you know, there are a lot of different things that do that, is that any belief system, heck, workplaces, you know, don't get me started on that, yep. we're talking about religion and spirit, but the, um, the emotional and, and literally spiritual abuse that happens when at that level, that you are told that you are basically, you know, dirt, yeah. um, is very difficult to yeah. overcome because then you're constantly, you know, unless you can find a way to take back your power, you're constantly in a position of making yourself dirt to be in alignment with what you were taught. Right. And then on top of that, it engenders another piece, which is the proselytizing. It, it, it creates this sense that if you are one of the few saved people, that it's now your responsibility to go out and save everyone else. Also known as it's your responsibility to go out and push your beliefs on others who didn't ask for them and don't want them. And so that that has its own thing because you're you're starting out any any spiritual tradition that starts out with the understanding that only the chosen are worthy and everyone else is shit. That's a problem. Okay. Any tradition that you look at where that is the starting point, you should run in the other direction because that is a recipe for spiritual abuse. That is a recipe for trauma. And that is a recipe for us versus them and a way to put people in foxhole bonding scenarios where they're like, oh, well, only my people are the right people and therefore everyone else is wrong and I should isolate myself from those who love me, right? Because they don't believe in the right way for the right thing. All of this is, is founded in victim mentality. And we talk a lot about victim mentality on this podcast. We talk a lot about not getting stuck in your victim and how righteousness 
is actually a victim state. It is a rebellion response to victimization. And anytime you're in rebellion, you are still being controlled by the thing you are rebelling against. And so when you're in this victim state, you're going to end up uh, you, doing things that will victimize others. That is the nature of the beast. Either you will be crushed under the weight of what's going on, or you will be harnessed to victimize others in the process. And so this is why it is so important to be very clear about what the hierarchical dynamics are of any tradition that you participate in, whether it's a Christian tradition, a Jewish tradition, or any, any religion, or whether it is a spiritual but not religious tradition, right? Or any other spiritual tradition. Knowing the hierarchical dynamics and being aware of what it, what is healthy and what is not healthy. And so today we're talking about this from the victim perspective of, you know, I'm a, um, or the potential victim perspective of I'm a student of a teacher who might be uh, an abuser. Um, and that could be, you know, in any tradition. Um, but next week we're going to talk about it from the p position of I am the teacher and how not to be one of those people. So we're, we're actually going to cover both sides of the coin. We're just doing this one this week and another one next week. So let's transition into spiritual traditions. Um, the, the more, you know, esoteric or new age or, you know, mystery school, all of those things, right? Um, when we, one of the, um, I got so many things to say, I can't even get my mouth to work. <laughs> Go ahead. Why don't you start? Because I'm trying well, to figure out what I want to say next. <laughs> I was just going to say that, um, when you are a seeker, you know, when you are in that position is that you are looking for somebody to help you, to guide you, to provide you with information and, um, like a Sherpa on the journey, like your spirit Sherpas. Um, and so it becomes very easy to hand over your power. Right. To say, you know, I, I don't know, and how, you know, show me kind of thing. Um, and the unfortunate part is oftentimes we don't know enough about who we're handing our power over to, and we don't know enough about the system or the practice that we're entering into to know when that becomes abusive because... <clears throat> like a lot of abused people, if they don't have a context for it, they think it's normal. Right. So the um, so I can say, be careful who you hand your power to. But if you don't have the context or the parameters, it can be very difficult to make that kind of assessment. Because you've got to start out with a basic sense of, um, I'm, a, I'm a healthy human being. And if this doesn't feel right, I need to check it out right. and not just follow blindly. Because there are a lot of people who will say, okay, and, and this is where spirituality starts to cross into religion to a certain extent, is when they start saying, this is the only way to do it, right? In other right. words, you have to, I mean, so from 20 years ago, it was you have to sleep with your, with your guru, right? Yeah. You know, if you're a woman, right? Yeah. <laughs> You got to sleep with your guru because that's part of the way that the energy is channeled to you. And I'm like, yeah, right. Bite me. I didn't yeah. go there. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, or you that, have by the to... way, is one of the symptoms of being in a cult is if you're being asked to give sexual favors to the leader of the, of the group. Yep. That's, that's an indicator that you're in a cult. Yeah. And um, another one was um, participation in, uh, say, ayahuasca. Okay, is that should be a choice, not a requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, because I discovered very early on in spiritual practice that I could make myself go places. I didn't need Mother Mushroom to guide me there. Right. So um, the I didn't need it and I didn't want it because, wow, what it did to me physically was just hard to, you know, deal with in the aftermath. Right. Um, but anybody that says, no, this is the way you must do it. Okay. This is the, you know, that, that whole thing a few years back with uh, the guy from, um, oh, names escape me, but um, the... You're talking it, about the sweat lodges? The sweat lodges, yeah, where yeah. people were forced to go in the sweat lodges and some people died. Yeah. Okay. Well, they weren't forced to go in, but they were encouraged to stay, even though they were starting to die. 
So they were, yeah. they were beyond encouraged. Yeah. They were manipulated. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing, right? Is that anytime you're shamed into an action in a spiritual practice, you should immediately leave. Right. Like, no question, nothing. If you are receiving shame for n choosing not to do something, you are being manipulated and you are in a toxic scenario. And the potential for abuse is huge. It, you are being abused. Yes, if you're you being, being shamed, abused. you're being abused. Yeah. yeah. And, and guaranteed there's other abuse happening at the same time. Yep. So, yeah. So shame is just, you know, that's not, not a thing. So... Um, always trust yourself over your teacher. So we'll just say that. And even if you can't get to the point where you completely trust yourself, don't give over unquestioningly. Right. Okay. If you have a question and you're uncomfortable, honor that. It means something. Yeah. Even if you don't exactly know where to go next, ask somebody else. Yeah. who's outside of that reach out you know it's kind of like the programs on tv where it's say call a friend right you know call a friend and check it out um somebody that you trust to give you you know good feedback on it because sometimes you don't know for certain you just know this doesn't quite feel right to me yeah and um and people override that intuitive sense of what's healthy for themselves because they think they need to or they ought to or they're being shamed into it and that's where you get not only abuse from the outside but then you're being self-abusive. Right. And it, it leads to traumatizing yourself or to being traumatized by the experience um, that you are feeling not called to be in, right? So, you know, so let's talk about the difference between resistance and actual valid, like, ack response to something that's not gonna go well, right? Because we can, we can have resistance. And resistance is common if you're doing spiritual level work. Resistance is common, right? Yep. This is one of the reasons why the very first classes that we teach in the, the Welcome to the Woo program are about resistance. Because you need to be able to identify what is resistance in you and what your default resistance is so that you will recognize it when it shows up. Because if you wait to try and figure out whether it's resistance or not, and you have not gotten into relationship with your resistance, then you won't know whether it is resistance or something that you're like really honestly, validly feeling bad about, right? Um, it's much harder to tell what the difference is, right? So in that scenario, this is why I'm saying you learn your resistances early on so that you don't end up going, well, I don't know. And then you default to, well, it must be resistance and I don't want to miss out on the experience. The FOMO, man, the FOMO is a problem, right? And, you know, the very first thing I'm going to say is don't ever do something just because you're going to feel sad you missed out on it because that's not a good reason, right? You do things because you want the transformation that are be that is being offered in the work. And if you are being shamed, if you're being coerced, if you are being cajoled or forced, if you're being told you can't not do something, that's, that is a problem, right? So, you know, I mean, unless you're out on a sandbar and you're being told that you can't not go back because the, the tide is coming in and it's a safety risk, that you have to do, okay? <laughs> but, but anything above and beyond that, mm -mm, no. Anything, or rather anything short of that, no, right? So just be aware that, that so spirituality, the thing about spirituality is, and, and the reason that everybody's here on the podcast, and including me and Kathy, is that we have childhood trauma. You know, there is childhood trauma. Yeah. And we are all dealing with some aftermath of that, right? And that makes us more at risk for abusers than any other group of people. And so this is why we address this. I mean, this is, I, I, did a podcast. Oh, wow. Probably in the first year of the podcast. Um, I did an episode on uh, how to pick your spiritual teacher. 
And we talked about this a little bit at that time, but now I really want to talk about it more in depth because one, there are a lot more people coming into this work who are very early stage themselves and they're, they're teaching when they're still in their ego and, and teaching from ego and, and, you know, I've already talked about how that's a stage and, you know, that's okay, but they're also more risky for people who are not good at knowing what they, they need and what they don't need. Right. So, you know, there are so many people coming flooding into this work that is so important to have this conversation right now. It is absolutely normal and reasonable to when you walk into a new landscape, which spirituality absolutely is, it is absolutely normal and reasonable to hand over po a portion of your power to the person who is guiding you because they are guiding you. You don't know this landscape. You're going to say, I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. I'm going to trust that you do because that's why I paid you. You're the person who knows how this is. It, to, to do anything else would be like saying, I'm going to climb the the uh, Mount Everest and I'm going to hire a guide and I'm going to take a completely different path than the one they tell me. Okay. That is just stupidity, right? You know, you just like, wait a minute. No. Why did I hire a guide if I was just going to take my own path? Right? So to a certain extent, handing over some portion, not all, but some portion of your power to that person is reasonable because they know more than you know, right? But you should never do the child version of trust with your spiritual teacher. The child version of trust is to say, I'm going to take everything about me and hand it over to you, and you will be responsible for me and my well-being because you're an adult, and that's not how you should be doing it. And if you do that, you're putting yourself at much higher risk because you don't know whether or not that other person is trustworthy until you've had a chance to interact with them for a while, right? And I have seen people get seriously sh shredded by people who were not worthy of that trust. Um, there's a woman who came to me in Boston who had been working for, with a shaman for several years. And she came to him one day and said, I feel complete. I am so honoring everything you've given me. I am so happy to have done this work with you. Thank you for the, the teachings you've given me. I, 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 I give you all of the credit and all of the respect and, 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 and thank you for getting me where I am and I am complete. And he turned around and looked at her and shredded her. He said, you are not ready. You aren't worthy of this. You're not ready. You did all these things that you did wrong. And, blah, 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 and just literally just like was shredding at her energy field and destroying her self-confidence because he didn't want to let go of her power. He was holding on to her power and he was using it. And he didn't want to let it go. I don't care if she wasn't ready. That, that is not an appropriate response. Okay. I don't care if she was being all ego filled and being like, Oh, look at me. I'm perfect. And I've done it all. You know, you, that's not the appropriate response. You don't rip somebody apart. That doesn't, that doesn't help them. You know, if somebody is in their ego and they're trying to leave before they're ready, you have to look at them and say, Oh, okay. I hear that. That's where you're feeling. And are you open to hearing just a couple of things before you go, you know, and if they're not, you say, okay, well, go with God, you know, or, you know, go with spirit, right? Be, be well on your journey because clearly you're done with me and I will trust the spirit will take you to the person that you need to talk to next, who will take the next piece of the puzzle that you couldn't receive from me. That is the appropriate response. That is not what this woman received. And we ended up doing a lot of healing work around that. So, I think you know, it's yeah. the difference between power and service. Yes. Is that it's if you are, and I don't want to get too much into the teacher side of it because we're going to talk about that next week. But the point is, is if you give over your power as the, as the person receiving in small or large quantities, is the person you're giving it to in a pos taking the position of power over and taking right. your power to facilitate that? Or are they taking your power in service right. to the journey that you are on? And it can, it, that's a fine-tuned kind of thing. You really got to get a sense of whether somebody's working with you 
from that that standpoint of uh, I think in the organizational work they called it servant leadership. Yeah. Right. Is that you're still in a leader position, but you're leading from a servant perspective. Right. Where you're guiding the person's journey with the understanding that they are sovereign beings, right? That they, they have their power, that they are ultimately meant to hold all of their power. And this is one of the things that we talk about a lot is that, you know, you, if, if the person, one of the great ways to figure this out is to look around and say, does this person have devotees? <laughs> Do they have, you know, people who are in, you know, servants to them? and really have no lives of their own? Or do they have people who are students, but are sovereign unto themselves or trying to become sovereign unto themselves? You know, do they have people who have left that they are still friendly with? Or do they have people who have left that are screaming from the rafters how much they suck, right? <laughs> you know, the, these, are, these are things to, to give you indications, right? But again, I don't want to spend too much time on the teacher side. So um, the I want to go back a little bit to the trauma because once you're in that position of being abused, okay, and I talked a little bit about it before, but what's your next step, right? When, when, you, when you kind of have an aha moment and recognize, hey, this is abusive, this sucks, um, because, you know, trauma needs to get addressed. And... One of the ways I addressed it was by reframing the things I had been taught and taking my power back. Because I'm the one that gives it out. Nobody can take it from me. You know, right. whether conscious or unconsciously, trained or untrained. But there's a certain point where I may not have a lot of choice because of the way I've been trained, but I'm the one giving it over. And the, the real power inherent in any individual is at any point in time you can make a choice to take it back. So, yeah. words of wisdom about addressing the trauma, are you? Um, yeah, so one of the things that I would say is that when you're standing in a position where somebody has proven themselves to be not worthy of the, the trust you have placed in them, right? Where they are taking advantage, right? And you'll know that they're taking advantage because your belly's going to start to hurt when you're around them. You're going to be like, eh, I don't want to, eh. you know, there's part of you, your gut will just start to twist when you think about being around them. And, you know, gaslighting is one of the biggest things that happens in this sort of scenario where people will be like, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. Whatever. If they start to make you feel like you don't know what's going on in your own world, that's a good time to leave too. Right? So, you know, in these situations, the very first thing to do is remove yourself from the situation. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in a toxic environment, I don't care what they say you have to do to get out, just get out. You can call another spiritual teacher and say, I need to be unentangled from this. You do not have to wait for them to release you. And anybody worth their salt will be able to undo that for you. But the, so the very first thing is get out. The second thing is to validate your own experience because the gaslighting is significant. And if you buy into the gaslighting, it will slow your recovery from the trauma dramatically. And so you need to validate your own experience. And whether you do that by telling people and having them say, that's a scene, I can't believe that happened, right? Or by talking to other people who got out and who were like, yeah, that, that shit was not okay, right? Um, and I had that same experience and I had this experience too. Did you have that, right? All of these things are ways to validate your own experience. And so when we... Uh, it, when we are witnessed by at least one person in our trauma, it is so much easier to overcome that trauma than if we go through it alone. And one of the biggest things that happens when you leave toxic groups is that they have everyone in the group shun you and leave you and you are left by yourself on the side of the road, right? It's just like you're, you're all alone in the world. And so finding other people to share your experience with who will validate that experience, super, super helpful, especially since 
the loss of community from leaving can be traumatizing unto itself. Now, if it makes you feel any better, one of the standard initiation points for shamanism historically, traditionally, has been a shunning. And so you can look at that as a spiritual growth process unto itself and uh, say, well, okay, that's step one in my initiation or step whatever in my initiation. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of, of the gaslighting piece, the validation is super crucial. Uh, and, and leaving the environment because you cannot continue to be traumatized if you're not there, right? And then from there, recovering from the trauma of them, you know, beating you on your way out the door sort of thing. Um, you know, that, that one's a little more dicey because that could be emotional trauma. It could be energetic trauma. It could be physical trauma, depending on the, the group. Um, so, you know, that one can be a little bit more complicated and obviously therapy is a wonderful thing for overcoming trauma. We, we, we highly endorse therapy for that reason. Yep. Um, and in terms of spiritual work, uh, in terms of recovering your energy, do not allow the victimization that you felt from the abuse that you experienced to translate into feeling victimized around getting your power back because nobody gets to keep your power without your permission. If you buy into the victim energy of the power, uh, in regards to your fat power, then you will have a hard time getting your energy back. But if you just say, nobody keeps, keeps my energy without my permission, and I don't care how victimized I felt about their actions, this does not get included in that pile. It is my energy, and it only goes where I send it. And then pull your power back. Because nobody can hold on to it without your permission. I don't care how strong they are. I don't care how powerful they are. I don't care how skilled they are. It's your power and ultimately it's yours. So, you know, without permission, they can't keep it. And so, you know, the belief that they can keep it is the thing that gives them the power to keep it, right? So, so I am telling you right now that belief is bullshit. So don't buy into it. So that this way you can bring your own power back to you. Okay. Anything else you want to add to that, Kathy? Um, no, I was just thinking of that, uh, the um, Taisha Abelar's book about um, going back through every scenario in your life you can imagine, that you can remember, where you've given away bits of your power, and in every instance, breathing it back in, taking back yours, not anybody else's, but taking back your power is a way, and in this circumstance, you know, very much underlies that nobody else can keep it if you take it back. And that mm -hmm. we give away little bits of ourselves, you know, over and over and over again throughout our lives. And that it can be very empowering to go back through and to those scenarios and just say, I'm taking my power back and breathe it in and then okay and let it go. And then I'm taking my power back and breathe it in and let it go. Um, and uh, there's a there's a huge not only validation but um, it, it will uh, it increases you back to the fullness of you again for moving forward. Yeah, and for those of you who want to know, Taisha Abelar wrote the book The Sorcerer's Crossing. That's where this is from, and it's she calls it recapitulation. So. Um, and Taisha was a uh, contemporary of uh, Carlos, Carlos Castaneda. Yeah. And Carlos Castaneda and Taisha together uh, were learning from uh, Don Juan Carlos. Is that right? I think so. Um, Don, Don, yeah. Don, Don Juan? Don Juan. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. I, yeah. Carlos is the one I remember. A, a but, sorcerer. Yeah. He was a sorcerer. Was a sorcerer. And sorcerer. so... They, they were students at the same time, and she didn't publish for 20 years after he did because that's what she was told to do. Um, but the book is quite impressive, and uh, it's told from a woman's perspective about sorcery. So uh, it's a lovely book. It's very hard to get through energetically. <laughs> um, it took a very long time to get, get through that book. Um, but... It is highly useful in what it teaches, especially for women. So, um, you know, guys can guys have all of the the, the Carlos Castaneda books, but uh, 
this is the only one I'm aware of for, for women. So anyway, so I, I think that pretty much runs the gamut. Is there anything you felt like we didn't talk about that you wanted to? Oh, I'm sure we could talk about lots more things, but I also recognize that we've been on for a while. So yeah. <laughs> give everybody a break. Yeah. And uh, okay. next week we'll address the teacher side of it. So. Yeah. So we will talk about it from the teacher side and, and what causes teachers to go down this path and how not to go down that path. And we'll talk about that next week. So uh, with that said, don't forget to join the Facebook group at Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta on the Facebook group. And you can ask your questions there, share your stories uh, about religious trauma or spiritual awakening or anything you want to talk about. Uh, I am actually in the process of putting together a spiritual awakening archive that I'm going to be asking you guys to contribute to, which will be a video and or audio uh, accounting of your spiritual awakenings. I've just got to figure out how to get people to be able to upload it without having to log into Google. So I'm, if anybody knows how to do that, call me, <laughs> reach out and, and tell me because I'm, I'm doing research trying to figure that out. But, uh, and then that's going to become a, a subsection of our channel on YouTube so that you can see other people's experiences of spiritual awakening so that you don't feel like you're all alone in the process. So um, that would be a lovely thing to contribute to. And I will let you know when we get that started. And okay, with that said, uh, please like, rate, and, and, and review. Help me out with the reviews. <laughs> I could have used it. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, a Kellyism for the week. Let's see. Um, how about if it feels bad, don't do it? That one's a good one. So, okay. And with that, uh, that is the end of our episode for this week. Uh, that's all we have. So, uh, and that's not my script to go out with. <laughs> that's all we have for this. Uh, yeah, I know. I actually have the script this time. Jewel sent it to me this time. That's all we have for this week. This <laughs> That's all we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when I add another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Kelly Sparta here with Kathy Shiron, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye-bye. Ha, ha, ha.